guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, we went shopping this afternoon and uh, we brought back two more. So uh, starting to get crowded around here. I think we're gonna have to make a video on adding on to the shop. Uh, definitely before it gets too hot. As you can probably see my breath this morning, it's, uh, it's not hot here. It's, uh, it's not hot at all. So we got the heater running and I thought I'd show you what we picked up and uh, tell you a little bit about it and see what direction maybe we'll take these. This is a 1983, I believe. I haven't run the number on it. 1983 185S. Um, someone's been playing with this one a lot. It's, it's been, it's rough. I think it'll run though. That said, we're gonna find out what's wrong with this bike. First things I always like to check is I wanna make sure the motor's free. A um, Couple ways you can do that is you can put it in gear. You can rock it back and forth. If you can feel the, the engine cycling or the piston going up and down, the transmission engaging, and, and things working as they should, uh, that's a good sign. But if you didn't have a chain on the bike, which is common, uh, chains break, chains wear out. People take them off, they never replace them, and the bike, the bike gets parked. Uh, so how would you check it then? If you had a pull start only bike like this one, uh, what steps would you go through to verify it's not locked up? Well, unfortunately at the seller's property, you probably can't, but once you get it home, that's the first thing you wanna find out. Well, everybody thinks they can weld that shifter on there and it'll be just fine. And it will. It will be just fine until you need to take it off. And, uh, and that's where we find ourselves today. And it could be why no one fixed that pull cord. Enough talk, more work. Be careful. They, uh, they'll break off these older bolts, especially if somebody's cross-threaded it, and you don't know that. And that's a pretty good way of removing that cover without prying on it. If you pry on it, if you pry on it, you will bend it. So what we've got here is there is a gear indicator on the back side here. It's just a little stud that rotates. Every time you change gears, it rotates. We know the motor's not locked up, so that's a good thing. That's our first step. Next things we wanna check for spark. Well, you would check for that in this situation we're using a drill like so, not an impact driver. An impact driver will back the bolt out where a drill will turn it slowly up to speed um, and, and, and it won't back the bolt out of the crank, but you don't want to do that. So I'm going to put the drill on this side. I'm just going to spin the motor over. This will be an opportunity to do a compression test, which we'll do next. So you got your spark plug here. I took it out of the engine. I put a wire brush on it and cleaned it up. I like to try to use what the bike came with before I start throwing new parts at it. I'm gonna hold the spark plug here. I'm gonna hold on to the rubber part with my hand. You don't wanna hold this, it will shock you. You hold it here. I'm gonna to try to get the camera where you can see the spark. Can you see that spark jumping between there? Yes, you can. All right. So that tells us we have a good ignition system, which is, there's four things you gotta have with any engine. You got a fuel, spark, air, and timing. So what we got here now is a compression tester. It basically is gonna, we're gonna screw it into the spark plug port here in the top. It's got a little O-ring, you can see. So you wanna make a seal there. We wanna figure out how much compression this engine has. So you watch that. Now, when you do a compression test, it's more than just spinning the engine over. You can use a pull rope, which would probably be better than using this drill, but this is all I've got right now. A couple things you wanna do. You wanna have the throttle all the way open. So engage the throttle, open the carburetor all the way up. Make sure the choke is off. You want as much air to go in there as possible. Choke off, throttle open. We're gonna spin it. Now with the drill, we're only gonna spin it for a few seconds. If you had a pull rope, you'd wanna probably pull, I generally do about five, to six pulls on a pull rope. And the highest reading is, is what you count. So here we go. All right, so how'd we do? Oh, we're 
coming up a little short. We're a little low. As you can see here on the gauge, we're about 85. Now, this bike could probably run with 85. A um, couple things we can do. Because it hasn't run in so long, we won't hold this as gospel yet. We'll do a couple more things. You could have, we've got spark, we've got enough compression. I'd say a minimum is about 75. If your engine has only got about 75 PSI, a strong chance it will not run. Um, you may get lucky and it may fire and run for a little while, but it is not gonna be nice. It's gonna smoke. It's gonna, it's gonna make some noises. Now, the target on this motor, if I'm not mistaken, is around 140 to 150 PSI. You wanna be up in that area for good compression or good combustion. Uh, so we are, we are definitely low. Now, that doesn't mean it's not going to run, but the chances are is it probably is gonna smoke a little bit. So now we know we've got two of the four things we really need. We've got compression, and we've got spark. Fuel is easy. Ignition is probably causes more people problems than uh, any of the other four. Timing, we will cross that bridge when we come to it. If we verify spark, and we verify fuel, and we verify air, and it still doesn't run, or it runs poorly, or backfires, or kicks back when it does start, and then we will go into timing. we've got some bad gas hold on a second all right we're gonna try this one more time we've rigged up a new uh, fuel supply with a new fuel filter in it and uh, this little can I got sitting here and let's see if that doesn't change anything So that was our key, that was our fail safe. You ground out the black wire to the main harness. Here, this has already been cut. That will kill the engine. If you don't have a key, of course, then you can ground out a short coal. That will also turn it off. So now we know we have a safe way to turn the bike off. Let's see if we can get it to run and idle. And if it will do that, then we'll verify if we can uh, shift gears and, uh, and make the tires turn. So let's see what we got. carburetor for a new aftermarket carburetor. Alright, now we got our full rope back on. Let's put our full start assembly back on. in a little bit so I'm gonna go in and we'll set the valves and see what we've got going on there 24 millimeter wrench these are your valve covers here two very large bolts looks what they look like they're covers this intake valve is on this side this is your so now we're going to check the valves just to kind of see what we're dealing with here so with it running a little bit we've got oil to the top of the engine that's always a good sign not loose or anything as in that the bolts are not loose. We need to set top dead center. And to do that, it 
They actually make a tool for this. A lot of guys use a quarter, a little pry bar here. Works out, it fits down in this uh, big slot quite well. And then we can just turn it out. What this does is this exposes the top of the flywheel where your timing marks are. This is an old flywheel off an old motor. Give you an idea of what you're looking for. So inside this hole, you're gonna keep rotating the flywheel or the engine until you see these marks. You have an F for fire, you have the center line, and you have a T for top dead center. So for timing one of these engines, what you wanna do is you wanna pull your pull rope until the flywheel comes around. Looking through this hole, this is an example, this is another flywheel off another engine. You wanna look for F and T, it's fire and top dead center. Line up this line here with a little notch that's in the top of your case. When those two align, you'll also notice that these two line up here. This is your pickup and this is your magnet on your rotor. When all of this lines up, you know you're in top dead center of the engine. When you're in top dead center of the engine, your valves are going to be loose. I mean, they're not going to be any tension on them. They're not opening, they're not closing, they're at rest. So, you're supposed to put a feeler gauge in here, and I believe it's 0.05 thousandths, which is, is, you know, extremely, extremely small. I can't get my hands in here to do the intake especially. So I can tell you that I can't move the intake valve right now at all. So we know that that valve is too tight. It should have just a little bit of play on it. And I can tell you that I can move the exhaust valve, and it's not bad. It's, it's a little loose, uh, but not much. So you're gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench, or you can use a small rasp. I happen to have one. Small ratchet works too. You just have to kind of finagle it in here. So it's 10 millimeter. You just want to break it loose, like so. Okay. Now, notice the orientation. Of the screw. There's a flathead screw there. And you're intended to use a little short screwdriver and rotate it. And this is the actual stem of the, of the rocker. As you see, it's loose. Okay. Yeah, that tap. And the engine's running. That's what you were hearing earlier. A little tap, 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 tap. So what I like to do is just take a screwdriver and run this down a little bit. Like I said, this was not really that bad out of adjustment. And for first starting an engine, nah, that's too tight. When you first start one that's been asleep for a long time, having the valves loose is a good thing. If there's any corrosion built up or carbon built up on them, it, can, uh, it gives them an opportunity to kind of knock all that loose, any rust knock all that loose when it does fire. If they're really, really tight, then they're not gonna have that opportunity. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the actual relationship of this line. I know that going this direction is too tight, and now this direction is too loose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda of just split the difference, like so. Like I said, I can't get my hands down in here. And on these engines, especially with some age, you're going to find that they're either, they get really, really tight or they get really, really loose. All right. So that should set our exhaust valve. You can't really see it move much, but if you listen, that's how much play I've got in there. Not much at all. Now as for the intake valve, I'm going to put the camera down and proceed and do the same job. Uh, it's just, I can't hold the camera and do all of this. So bear with me. Now this also, we talked about the low compression when we tested this engine. This certainly could have contributed to that. You got a valve that's open a little bit, it's not closed or seated like it should. It's going to leak, it's not going to hold pressure. Um, you've got one that's got a little piece of carbon built up because it hasn't closed correctly in a long time. It's not going to seal up. 
we may find ourselves with an engine that has very good compression once we get it all up and running. And that would be great. So don't always take your first reading when it comes to compression as gospel. You may find that it's just out of adjustment. That can make all the difference in the world. to the next step after putting the carburetor on to check the valves was because it was not wanting to idle. It, uh, I had to turn the idle adjustment screw all the way in and that's kind of a, a, an obvious sign for me that you've got a valve that's not acting properly. Uh, generally it's an intake valve which in this case that one was really tight and so that, that actually worked out as the correct um, diagnosis. As you see now, I was able to turn the idle way down, which is where it should have been to, in the beginning. And it, and it was much smoother as it was running. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble this air box. And I'm gonna grab the tank. We're gonna change gears here. All right, first ride, 1983, 185. Total, probably have about four hours in it. Let's see what we've got. Choke on, fuel on. Cold start. Yeah. 